na po. Okay, all right, perfect. All right, so again, we are now uh, with the last, no? We are now in the last topic na yun for parasitology. And that is your cestodes, your tapeworms, and your arthropods of medical importance. Okay, so again, there's if I will be disconnected or mawala kong camera, kaya may tutulog ka siya, just tell me. And then um, if ma-choppy or unsa magani again, just tell me. All right, sige. So we're going to start, all right? Again, our discussion for this week are your tapeworms, your cestodes, no? So again, balik ta ani. <laughs> so we're almost done. Ato na lang i-discuss is kaning ectoparasites and the cestodes. So the cestodes are the last group of your worms under helminths na to i-discuss. Okay? So tapeworms, all right. So of course, uh, we first discuss with the general characteristics. So your tapeworms, again, in general, they are flattened, no? Ilahang itsura flat. Okay, ayan. So may mga kilala ba kayong flat? Charot. Ayan, flat na mga worms. So same siya o phylum. They belong to the same phylum with your trematodes or your flukes. No? They're all under the phylum platy helminthes. Diba? And platy, nasa pangalan na flat. No? So these are flat worms. Okay, lahang body, flat. No? Alright. Now, um, the tapeworm, however, yahang appearance is ribbon-like. No, mara siyang ribbon, kay pataas siya. Alright? and nasa mga segments okay it is segmented all right unlike your tape uh, unlike your flukes or your trematodes na di segmented okay your tapeworms are segmented meaning nasa own segments okay in individual segments ay yahang body and pataas siya so mura siya og ribbon okay ribbon like appearance all right again segmented unlike your trematodes na non segmented uh, flat and leaf like now similar with your um trematodes they are also Monoecious or hermaphroditic. So your tapeworms, all right, they have both the reproductive organs of the male and the female, all right? So ang imuhang tapeworms, same with trematodes, they are monoecious or hermaphroditic, all right? But unlike your unlike your trematodes, na naay the only exception sa na dioecious, ang imuhang tapeworms wala. No, most of them, if not all, are all monoecious and hermaphroditic, okay? So di ba sa trematodes, Kinsa man tong the only exception by paramour na siging uh, lahi and the only dioecious na trematod kinsa to siya si Hala o o <laughs> anya okay kinsa man tong dioecious na to na trematod Schistosomes sir okay dili pa sure <laughs> na schistosomes ba <laughs> sure na sir okay kinsa man ni who is this? Nika, sir. Nika, okay. Thank you, dears. Ayan. Tama, no? Dapat sure yun, it's schistosoma. Wala, oi, okay. kalimta na itong discussion sa schistosoma. Naka, naka-synchronous mo tato, no? Sa schistosoma? So, wala. <gasps> I think wala. <laughs> anyway, alright. Basta the schistosomes, ha? Please, lanta mo sa trematodes. Okay, very important po to share. Alright, so schistosomes, no? The schistosoma species, sila ang dioecious na mga trematodes. Because the rest of your trematodes, they are monoecious. So, si schistosoma, naagin siya separate na male, na siya separate na female. Alright. Now, for cestodes, wala in ana usually sa mga medically important uh, tapeworms. Because most of the tapeworms, again, if not all, are monoecious. Okay? They have both this, the male and the female reproductive organs. Okay? In one body, in one worm. Alright? Now, they don't have the gastrointestinal system, wala po sila yung circulatory system. So, ang iyahang, iyahang mga nutrients, mga food na iyahang ginakaon, they are absorbed through the integument, no? Sa skin, sa imuhang tapeworm, alright? So, dira, mo, dira niya ma-absorb ang imuhang nutrients, dira po na ipagawa sa mga waste products, okay? Alright. Now, again, they have well-developed reproductive organs. You have testes, ovary, and uterus. The mode of transmission for your tapeworms uh, is oral route, no? Ingestion jun most of the time. So, um, I think tanang tapeworms good na, na medically important. They can be transmitted through ingestion, no? By the ingestion of food, ingestion of water, ingestion of the intermediate host body, depende. So, uh, ingestion siya. So, walay tapeworm na skin penetration, unlike schistosoma. Again, na, na skin penetration. All right. So, majority of the medically important tapeworms they are transmitted through fecal oral route or oral route or ingestion. Okay. Now, habitat most of them again. They reside in the small intestine. The adult tapeworm reside in the small intestine. All right. Okay. Sige. So, ato na lang tawon ning, um, ato ning usa-usahon, no? Ang part sa tapeworm. Starting first with the head, no? Um, sana? Uh, Filipinos love to suck the head. 
Oh, a shrimp. Pastos ka talaga. Charot. Ayan, di ba? So, we'll start first with the head, no? <laughs> so, we'll start first with the head of your tapeworm. So, the head of the tapeworm is uh, consists, or consists of your scolex. This scolex is the anterior attachment organ. So, don't be confused. Pero yung scolex, dili niya siya yahang baba. Di ba? We mentioned na wala siya mouth, okay? Um, and yahang, yahang nutrients na makuha kaysa yahang skin mo agi, sa integument. This scolex or this head portion is just for attachment purposes, okay? So, scolex, this is the anterior attachment organ. Now, yahang shape could be uh, different or it could vary from species to species. But majority of your tapeworm um, species, they have a globular shape. So, in ani, mara siya globe, di ba? Ayan, globular shape. Na ayo bang tapeworms na uh, spoon-like. So, mara siya kutsara, no? Spoon-like or almond-shaped yahang scolex. So, ato na siya i-discover later kung kinsan na ng mga tapeworms. Alright. Now, the non-recovery of scolex, di ba? We have discussed this already that uh, the non-recovery of the scolex would mean unsuccessful treatment. Di ba? Ang question is, which of uh, this part of the tapeworm um, if dili siya ma-recover, di ba? It means failure of therapy or uh, the recovery of this tapeworm part indicates success in treatment. Press a buzzer. Atong answer is scolex. Okay, so that's the head, no? Because again, from the head, dito magsugod ang growth, no? Dito magsugod ang growth, ang mga ang tapeworm. So meaning, if nagtambal ng patient and then wala dyan po nakita ng scolex, it means naka-attach siya, give dyan siya sa intestine. So possible na maka-create pa siyang infection or maka-create pa siyang new proglotids or new segments para mo padayo ng infection, no? So that's why ang scolex atong basihan to indicate if the treatment is failure or uh, to indicate if the treat treatment is a success or a failure. Alright? So, that's for scolex. Now, for the scolex, na pa additional structures, number one, you have the rostellum or rostellum. This rostellum is a protrusible structure. So, meaning, pwede siyang mo, pwede siyang ma, pwede siyang mo down, pwede siyang mo taas. Uy, yeah, sino yan? Charot. <laughs> okay, I think you have that. Charot. <laughs> May mga rostellum din kayo, eh, man. Charot. So, rostellum is the protrusible structure, no? Um, This can be described as armed rostellum. When you say armed rostellum, na asya'y hooks, um, and pwede mo siyang unarmed. So when you say unarmed, it doesn't have any hooks. Okay, so again, still the main purpose of the hooks and the rostellum is for attachment to the intestine. Alright? And aside from that, you have the suckers. Ayan, so mahilig siya mag-suck. No, kabatin mo mga trematodes, obsestodes, hilig sila mo suck, no? So baka trematodes, obsestodes ka na, charot, eme. Okay, tsaka na. So ang suckers, uh, it could be grooves, no? In appearance or suckers. Now, they're... These are also known as your acetabulum or acetabula. Kung plural, acetabula. Okay. Now, these again are uh, for attachment purposes. All right. Majority of the tapeworm species have suckers. Uh, four kabuo. No? Four ka suckers. Except for diphilobothrium latum. Ang inaaniya kay grooves. Okay. Or your bothria. So, later atin na siyang ilantawon kung sa itsura na. No? But again, majority of your tapeworm, inaaniya ang itsura. Four ka suckers. No? Four kasakers, globular ang scolex, okay? And um, you also have a rostellum na na hooks, okay? But not all species have a unarmed uh, rostellum or dilita ng species na ay hooks ang rostellum. Uh, Naiuban na walay hooks ang rostellum, alright? So that's for the head, that's the scolex, okay? Next sa scolex is your neck, okay? My neck, my back, no? So sa neck, dito na mag-start o grow, no? This is the point of proliferation or the region of growth, no? Because next sa neck is the individual segments now. And these individual segments are known as your proglotids, okay? Now, individual segments, proglotids. Pero a chain of segments, meaning kanislatanan, alright, kanislatanan, this is known as your strobila. Please take note. Kung individual segment, try mong nakita sa specimen, then that is known as a proglotid lang. Siya lang usap, no? Pero kung chain of segments yung nakita, then that is a strobila. Okay? Please take note, no? Now, your proglotids can also be of different types. Pwede siyang immature, pwede siyang mature, and of course, pwede siyang gravid, no? The immature proglotids usually are the nearest to the neck, no? So, in the immature uh, proglotids, usually wala kayo makita pa dira na mga organs, no? Uh, it's found nearest to the neck, so immature pa lang. Once you go further, further down the chain, okay? <laughs> further down the strobila, ang next sa immature is, of course, the mature. And in the mature uh, proglotid, you can already see the male and female reproductive organs and different structures pa. And then, ang pinakalayo good, no? Pinakalayo from the neck, the farthest from the neck and the last part of the strobila, that is your gravid proglotids, okay? And the gravid proglotids or ripe proglotids 
these already contain the uterus that has a lot of eggs already. So ang nana lang sa proglotids na gravid, ang imo makita na lang kay mga uterus na lang. Wala na yung other reproductive structures. Uterus na lang that contains already the eggs. Okay? So usually, kabantay mo na, of course, um, the gravid proglotid siya nasa pinaka-end. Because again, para easy na lang siya to detach. Okay? And this process of detachment is known as apolysis. No? Marcos, apolysis, charot, eme. <laughs> checka, checka. Okay? Ayan. So, ah, nabuisit ko light. But anyway, ayan. So, riper gravid, again, apolysis, the detachment of uh, the gravid proglotids. No? So, nga naman nilang i-detach para, of course, ma-release ang eggs to the environment para maka-infect na siya o another host or another... Um, human, no, inana. So that's why they detach their proglotids. For niobang tapeworms, of course, na dili madetach ang proglotids, and that is known as tapeworms that are anapolitic, okay? Anapolitic. A-N-apolitic. Anapolitic, okay? <laughs> Ayan. So opposite sa apolysis, of course, anapolitic. Right? So kanin sila, these are tapeworms that ang ilahang proglotids dili madetach, okay? Ayan. So that's for the different uh, uh, parts, no? So far sa body, sa mohang tapeworm, okay? So neck is the region of growth, my neck, my back, yes. From there, the different uh, individual segments of the tapeworm will arise. And these individual segments is called your proglotids. And a chain of these segments, meaning silang tanan yun, chain of these segments, chain of these segments or feathering body of the tapeworm, this is known as the strobila, okay? Alright, so immature ang pinaka near sa neck followed by your mature, and then last is your gravid proglotids. Okay, alright, sige. So, check nyo na yung self nyo. Kung madali kayong ma-attach, baka meron kayong scolex. Okay, <laughs> I have to check myself then. I think meron akong scolex. Amen, charot lang. Ayan, so again, those are the initial parts of your tapeworm. No? So, very important lang. Very easy to remember or very simple up against structure, diba? You have the head, which is your scolex. You have the neck, and then the different segments na. Okay? Kung saan man akong video, oh my God. Maraming siyang balloon. <laughs> okay, basta mo na siya yung point. You have the scolex, the head, and then finally the, the neck, the region of growth, and then the succeeding proglotids or strobila. Okay? So I hope na get siya siya. Now, uh, alcohol ingestion, especially, especially for tainia species, no? it's postulated or it's believed that alcohol irritates the tapeworm. Okay? Kung may nung kag-alcohol, pwede ma-irritate ang tapeworm, possible na ihang ma-detach ihang mga proglotids anak. Okay? So, please take note na yung question dito, which of the following can uh, promote apolysis? Ayan. Which of the following can promote apolysis, apolysis of your tapeworm proglotids? At ang answer is alcohol ingestion. Please take note. So, of course, I, I'm sure, <laughs> dahil lang ma-remember kasi marami naman kayong umiinom dyan ng ano, ng alcohol, amen, charot lang. <laughs> Drink responsibly, amen, ganun, okay? So, alcohol ingestion, again, facilitates or irritates the tapeworm, hence, leading them to apolysis uh, of the tapeworm, especially for tainia species, okay? Alright, so that's for alcohol ingestion, okay, and for the segments of your tapeworm. So, here are the differences between the different proglotids. So, as you can see, the immature proglotids there, if you can see there, diba? so you can see more, wala pa may makita ang mga organs sa sulod. And then sa mature, kabantay na mo here, these are the uterus na, and then the different reproductive structures. And then finally, the gravid proglotids, kabantay na mo na mga branches. no? And these branches are the uterus filled with eggs. Okay, so again, ato nang i-discuss sa different species because na ubang species sa tapeworm that we use uh, the appearance of the gravid proglotids for their identification, okay? So, later now when we go to the different species. All right. Now, additional structures of your tapeworm are the pores, no? The pores. <laughs> the pores. Ang ito kong nap-nap, pero wala kong mati. Pores. Okay. Pores, second, third, charot, amen. Ah, pangit. Anyway, ayan. So, you have the uterine pore, which is usually found lang sa di diphilobotrium lato. So, this uterine pore is actually a pore, most look good on the uterus, no? Uh, so, meaning, after ma-fill na sa uterus with eggs, no? or after the eggs are already filled in the uterus, the eggs can immediately go out no? through the uterine pore. And the uterine pore is usually found sa center sa body. No? Ventral sa medial surface of your proglotid. Okay. Now, some tapeworms, aside from Diphilobotrium latum, they have the genital pore. This genital pore is where the male and female organs meet. All right? uh, some eggs can be disposed here, but majority of the eggs 
mahitabo lang siya or ma-dispose siya sa environment or ma-release siya sa stool if ma-detach ang gravid proglotins from the body or from the strobula, di ba? Because your gravid proglotins siya ang nasa pinaka-end, di ba? And we say that these can be detached, a policies, no? And pag detach nila, pwedeng ma-rupture ang wall sa gravid proglotid, mugawas ang eggs na nasa uterus, no? So usually, inanailahang pag-dispose or pag-release sa eggs, okay? Uh, but again, they can also use the genital pore to release the other eggs po nila, alright? So those are the different mechanisms, methods of egg release, okay? So that's for the different pores, ayan. So picture, as you can see, ang genital pore is nasa side, no? Lateral, uh, but la lateral portion of the proglotid. Whereas for uterine pore, as you can see, this one, ayan, nasa sa taas, sa imuhang uh, uterus, okay? So it's immediately on the uterus. So possible ng eggs mugawas dito, alright? And usually, ang uterine pore is seen sa diphenobotrium lato, okay? Alright, see. Now for the eggs, we go na to the different type of eggs sa imuhang tapeworms. Tanang tapeworms, again, are unoperculated. So wala siya operculum, unlike or except, except, naradyo yung one exception, si Diphilobotrium lato. Ayan. So si D. lato, siya ang the only exception sa <laughs> sa mga cestodes or sa tapeworms. Pero sa flukes, no, sa trematodes, ang atong the only exception is schistosoma. So sa cestodes, si D. lato, sa tape, uh, sa trematodes or sa flukes, si schistosoma. Alright? So again, tanang tapeworms, aside from Diphilobotrium lato, they don't have an operculum, all right? Now, what they have is an oncosphere, which is the embryo, developing embryo itself, within a membrane that is your oncosphere, all right? And this oncosphere may contain hooklets, all right? And majority of them, they have six hooklets. 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 No? That's why it is described as hexacant, okay? Hexacant embryo in the oncosphere because it contains the six hooklets. These six hooklets will be used by the embryo to penetrate the intestine inside the host. No? So, pagkaon sa patient sa egg, no? kanyang mga hooklets, muna siya gamiton sa parasite para mo penetrate or mutapot siya sa intestinal wall. Alright? So, later when we go to the life cycle, ato i-describe na siya. Okay? Alright, sige. Now, the adults, again, as mentioned, are usually found in the small intestine. Your larval stages of tapeworms, if makaon na siya, usually sila ang mo reside sa ubang mga tissues. They insist, no? They, they form cyst structures in the intermediate host, okay? So usually, kita humans, if we have adult tapeworms in our intestine, usually, they don't cause severe symptoms kaayo, no? Majority of the time, or most of the time, they don't cause severe symptoms or life-threatening symptoms. But once we get the larva, all right? Once we get the larva of the tapeworm and then we migrate siya to other tissues in the body, then dito na siya makakos gilo mga life-threatening or severe complications. Okay? So, if adult tapeworm rang nasa mong tiyan, okay ra. Prognosis is good. Symptoms are not that severe, quite mild lang, and not life-threatening. But if you get the larva, alright, and this particular larva of a particular tapeworm species exhibits migration, pwede siya migrate to the other organs in the body, then that could lead to severe symptoms and mga life-threatening diseases. Okay? So, per majority yun, if adult tapeworms ang nasa to ang lawas, it wouldn't cause that uh, severe or life-threatening symptoms. Okay? So, that's for the stages of your cestode. So, follow rin kung egg, larva, and then uh, adult. Okay. Alright, sige. Oh, oh. Tasan ko eh. Char. Okay. Now, for your tapeworms, we have two orders. No? Two main Order. So, dili na siya ka C4, C3, charot. Eh? <laughs> Jolly bee yarn, anyway. And so, two main orders. Now, the first one is your order, pseudophilidian. So, your order, pseudophilidian, are, uh, is consist or is composed of your um, Diphenobotrium latum and Spirometra species. Because these two are, again, what we consider as false tapeworm. Because, again, di ba, kabantay na mo, that ilahang eggs are operculated, no? They require usually duha ka intermediate host. Okay? And aside from that, uh, ilahang collex kay different sa, re sa rest of the tapeworm. So, medyo murag dili siya ang tinuod na tapeworm. Kaya ilahang characteristics quite similar sa mga flukes or chamatodes. That's why they are called pseudo pseudophilidian or false tapeworm. When you say pseudo, di ba? Pseudo, false. No, shodo, charot. Pseudo. <laughs> pseudo, false. No, ganun. So, pseudo pseudophilidian, your false tapeworm. Again, this is composed of your uh, Diphilobotrium latum and Spirometra species. And then, of course, the next order is order Cyclophilidian. All right? 
sisig daw, chalateme. Or the cyclopelidia and the true tapeworm. So, there are some species that would require um, a vertebrate intermediate host, meaning kailangan dun sila o mammals ba or um, mga reptiles, basta, basta vertebrates. No? Example of that, you have Tania species, Tania solium and Tania sarginata. Some species may require an, an invertebrate intermediate host, so mga insects, no? such as Dipelidium caninum. And species that may require or may not require an intermediate host, you have Hymenolepis name. Again, so ito na siyang i-discuss ang mga different species individually in the later part of the lecture. Alright, so kalma lang. Okay, ayan, <laughs> sige. Now we go now to the lifespan. No? So as you can see, your tapeworms usually can reside in the body for a longer period of time. No? Uh, so up to 25 years, as you can see, pwede si Bilato, pwede po ng Tania species. Usually less than one year age, the Minuta and uh, Dipelidium caninum. And perhaps many years because of auto-infection, excuse me, perhaps of auto-infection you have H. Nina. So usually, taas sila o, um, taas sila o kanang lifespan uh, because, again, most of the time, once they are inside the small intestine, they do not really cause that much of any symptom. So possible lang yun na asymptomatic ka, but you have a tapeworm inside of you, no? So possible lang na mo reside siya there for a long period of time. So wala kayo na feel, wala po kayo symptoms na ma-feel or ma-exhibit, no? So possible yun na it will be left undetected for pila ka years, muna pwede siya mo reside there for pila ka years. And it could be that they're well attached, no? To your intestine because of their skull legs, rostral loom. So possible yun na dugay silang matangtang, all right? And dugay silang detach from the intestine to be removed from the body. Okay, but depende is uh, example di kaninom and H. minuta. Usually less than one year lang sila because the immune system can also immediately attack them or dalira po silang ma clear sa body. Okay, unlike sa uban. Okay, all right. So that's for the lifespan of your common trematod uh, cestodes. Sorry. Now for treatment, most of the time, most of your cestodes are um, are treatable uh, with praziquantel, but na yung ubang diseases caused by the uh, cestodes such as cystocercosis or hydrate disease that we use albendazole or metendazole. And again, each species put of tapeworm later on, uh, nine mga specific treatment put methods depend on disease. So, ato na siyang i-discuss po as we go along. Alright? So, that's for the lifespan. Now, again, a difference, tabular summary of your um, two orders, no? Uh, you have the pseudo and the cyclopelidian. Again, when you say pseudo this is, again, um, False tapeworm. Okay, false tapeworm. Your cyclophilidian is the true tapeworm. So for the scolex, again, the scolex of your uh, pseudophilidian is described as, and say appearance niya, spoon shaped, marasyag almond, okay, almond shape, all right, um, and as grooves, no, slit like grooves known as your bothria. That's why ang alan si mong dipilobothrium na ay bothrium because of uh, the sucking grooves na naaniya, na all right, and that is described or that is known as your bothria, all right. Now, for cyclophilidian, again, globular, katong ganina, marasya globe. And then usually four kasuckers, no? cup-like suckers. And they may also contain a rostelum. But again, not all species, na yung ubang species na ay hoax. And if na siya hoax, it is, it is called as armed rostelum. And if wala siya hoax, it's called unarmed rostelum. Okay? Now, for the strobila, your pseudophilidian, as we have mentioned, is anapolitic. Okay? So meaning, dili siya mo. Tang -tang, no? Dili matang -tang yung individual segments. But for your cyclophilidian, it is apolitic. Pwede niya matang-tang iyahang individual segments. So sa specimens sa stool, for pseudophilidian, usually egg siya ito makita. Pero na ay times na pwedeng chain of segments ato makita, dears. So pakitake note na lang dyan, that aside from eggs, pwede pong chain of segments yun. Di individual segments, pero chain, taas yun na segment. Okay? But for cyclophilidian, you can also see the eggs, you can also see individual proglotids. Okay? That's the difference na. Pwede po ka makakita chain of proglotids sa uh, cyclophilidia ng mga tapeworms, pero makakita po dyan kag individual na proglotids. Okay? Pero for pseudophilidia, most of the time, eggs na yun, and if makakita kag segments, chain. Okay? Chain of segments, dili itong uh, individual na segments. Okay? Because again, they are anapolitic, meaning dili sila makadetach sa ilang mga proglotids, or diba? Sana all dili matitouch. Okay. Next, for the ova, again, your pseudophilidian are operculated, so marag seems sila sa trematod, uh, marag fluke, ilang mga eggs. And then for cyclophilidian, again, hexacanth embryo, alright? Uh, Nang oncosphere, yes, muna siya. And non-operculated. Now, for the larval stages, different point for your pseudophilidian, to look at larval stages, it starts with your coracidium, followed by your procercoid, and then finally, the pleurocercoid 
larva. This pleurocircoid larva is usually the infective stage to humans and other definitive hosts. Uh, for cyclophilidian or true tapeworms, depend on species. No? Cystocercus for your tenia species, cystocercoid for your hymenolepis, dipelidium and radiatina, and you have hydatid for echinococcus. So, si hydatid Diaz, charot. <laughs> Ato first gold medalist sa Olympics, si hydatid Diaz, M. Charot. Sige, pakitype ng ha-ha-ha. Salamat sa support. <laughs> charot. <laughs> Funny dia to. Pila ko habi. Charot lang. Okay. Hydatid Diaz, charot. Hydatid is for echinococcus. Larval stage of echinococcus. Okay. <laughs> Alright. Now, for intermediate host, different point, no? Your pseudophilidian, they require two intermediate hosts. And usually, the first intermediate host is your copepods, all right? The cyclops species, all right? And then the second is usually a fish, all right? Smaller fishes and then the larger fishes. So, kabantay mo, ang pseudophilidian yun, murag same-same yun siya o karakteristik sa mga flukes, no? Mga trematodes, di ba? Okay, they require po duha ka intermediate host. Yung mo pong flukes, kailangan po duha ka intermediate host. Ang egg sa pseudophilidian ay operculum. Ang imuhang fluke po na eggs na ay operculum. So, di ba? Muna siyang pseudophilidian yung ngalan. Murag, uh, diligid siyang tinuol na tapeworm. Okay? So, false tapeworm lang siya. Ayan, nagpapanggap. Charo, check ka lang. Okay. Now, for the cyclophilidian ng mga worms, uh, usually, usara ka intermediate host. And usually, the intermediate host is an arthropod vector. Mga insects, no? Beetles, mga fleas, no? Ganun. Um, or some also do not require an intermediate host. Okay? All right. Now, for gravid proglotid, um, for pseudophilidian, you can see all the reproductive structures. And the uterus is described as having a rosette-shaped appearance. Okay? Rosette shape. So, mara siya rose na flower. And then, for cyclophilidian, um, makita rin is uterus. And the uterus can be uh, of different shapes and different appearances. And this is what we usually use for identification, aside from the eggs ba or other uh, structures. All right? And uterine pore, again, the uterine pore is usually seen lang sa mga pseudophilidian, na mga tapeworm. And sa cyclophilidian, wala sila uterine pore. Okay? Alright. Genital pore ay ang naan nila sa side sa proglotin. Okay. So, di ba, we mentioned that pseudophilidian, ilahang first intermediate host kay the cyclops or copepods. Kinsa ka nitong nematod na ang iyahang first intermediate host po kay cyclops. Doha ito sa kabo, pero kinsa itong usa at itong pinaka-popular. Okay. Na ang iyahang first intermediate host kay copepods or cyclops. Kinsa man ito? Ako, nakalimutan na. <laughs> Kinsa man to? Ang iya first intermediate host kay Cyclops from the water. Nandiyan pa ba kayo? Na-disconnect ko? Oh my God. Kinsa man to? Kinsa man tong first intermediate host kay ano? Nematode ha? Roundworm? Uh, Kinsa man tong nematode na Cyclops iya first intermediate host? Baga. Kinsa man to? Si? Doha ito sa kabuo, di ba? Pero kato lang usap. Draconculus. Okay, Draconculus. Beden Bedenensis. Okay, very good. Magaling, no? Don't forget, your Draconculus, Medinensis, your fiery serpent, di ba, of the Israelites, your guinea worm, no? Your serpent worm, the nern. Okay, so tama, di ba? Tama. That is your Draconculus, Medinensis. Siya ang mukamit ng Cyclops as the first intermediate host. Kisa pa itong lain, nanematod. Nanematod. Na ma-remember ninyo. Sorry, wala na ako yung na-remember, sir. Sige lang. Okay. Kisa pa ito, letter G. Nostosoma spinigirum. Okay, very good. Nostosoma spinigirum. So silang duha, sila yung mga gamit yung mga cyclops as first intermediate host. Okay? So don't forget, you have Um, Jaconculus medinensis, siya yun ang pinaka-popular na gamit na. Second is Nacostoma spinigirum. So silang duha, nematodes, round worms. Okay? But for tapeworms, kinsay mo gamit na, kinsay mo gamit yung cyclops, si Diphilobotrium latum. So okay, take note na, kinsa itong mga pigamit yung cyclops as first intermediate host. You have, again, Jaconculus and si Nacostoma for the round worms or nematodes, and you also have Diphilobotrium for the tapeworms. So I hope ha, I hope you're happy, Charot. I hope, I hope lang yun na hindi na mo malibog kung unsa nag-group ni mga worms, no? So, if mamata na na unsa man nag-group ni si Napostoma, I hope gets na na nematod, okay? Roundworm. Unsa nag-group ni silang tingin niya sa Ginata, of course, tapeworm. So, I hope, kabalo po sa differences, ha? Please naman. 
<laughs> Sana na ba? Okay? Kaya walang puno sa itong mga lectures at ever. Okay? Maglibog pa. So, again ha, nematodes, your roundworms, your trematodes, your flukes, katong mga flat yun na leaf, iyahang, leaf-like iyahang shape. And then of course, our last topic, your tapeworms na murag, murag ribbon, pataas na individual segments. Na dyan sila segments. Okay? Alright, sige. That's for the difference of your pseudophilidian and cyclo Philidian. Okay, so we go na to the different larval stages para mas maklarong yun nung si mga differences. Because again, uh, kanina mga terms, atin is nang balik-balikon uh, karun uh, in the later parts sa lecture, samot na mag-discuss sa life cycle and also at least na may picture, clear picture kung sa'yo mga itsura nila. So we'll start first with pseudophilidian. So ang pseudophilidian, again, kinsan ni sila, silang dipilobotrium and spirometra. So as you can see, mag-start siya egg, okay? Next, ang uh, first larval stage niya is coracidium, followed by Procercoid and then finally plerocercoid. So plerocercoid is the last larval stage before mahimo siyang adult nesestod or adult tapeworm. Okay, that is uh, the larval stage just followed by your pseudophilidian. So diphilobotrium spirometra. Okay, next you have the cyclophilidian, kato mga true tapeworm. So tania, hymenolepis, no, you have diphilidium, echinococcus. So sila na. So they start first with the egg, and the egg again contains the oncosphere, okay, which again is the embryo, developing embryo, and the oncosphere now differentiates into different larva, depende sa species. So you have the cystocercos, which is the larval stage of tenia species, tenia solium, tenia saginata. Your cystocercoid, okay, we mentioned that already, this is the larval stage of hymenolepis, dibilidium, and reliatina, so silang, silang tulo, no? Cinerus, or Cinerus, yes, this is the larval stage of Tania multiceps. So, lahing niya na species of Tania, alright? Tania multiceps. And then lastly, of Hydatid diaster. Hydatid cyst. <laughs> this is the larval stage of Echinococcus. Okay? So, different appearances of the larval stages depending on the species. Again, that is seen in Cyclophilidian, ng mga tapeworms, the true tapeworms. Now, your sister circus, yang itsura kapante mo, is again fluid filled na siya na bladder. That's why your cystocircus is also known as the bladder worm. Okay, bladder worm. So ito na siya i-discuss in the later part when we go to Tania. So again, this is seen in Tania saginata and Tania solium. Alright? So again, this is the scolex deers kanin na sa sulod. So it is invaginated, meaning ni sulod siya sa si mohang bladder, uh, bladder cyst. Okay? And then, Pag kaon ano or pag sulod sa intestine, musaka na siya ang imuhang skolex. Kaning, kaning nagkulog di rin. Alright? So, mo evaginate siya. Mo evaginate. Okay? That's cystocircus. So, fluid-filled iyahang cyst. Basa, no? Na itubig ang sulod. Okay? Next, ang cystocircoid, ang iyang difference is walay fluid. Okay? Kabantay mo? Solid ang tail. Okay? Iyahang appearance. Solid. And then here, this one nasa tunga. This is your skolex na nagdevelop. Okay, so similar gyapon with sister circus na mo, saka na siya, or mo pop open, ba mo ana, okay? Pag na na siya sa intestine, alright? Now, your sinorus is a sister circus, same siya, same siya ani, alright? Pero ang difference lang sa sinorus kay daghan siyang skolex, okay? Ang imong sister circus, usara ang skolex, ang sinorus kay daghang skolex, okay? Now, hydatid, that's a different na po na itsura. Ato rin ang i-discuss o intense when we go to echinococcus, okay? Kay daghan siyang parts, alright? So those are the larval stages of your true tapeworm. So mas mas daghan. All right. So I hope uh, mag magets lang ha dili na malibog when, once we discuss the life cycle of the specific na mga species of tapeworm. Okay. So again, cystocircus sa mga tenia, tenia saginata, tenia solium, cystocircoid, hymenolepis, dipilidium, uh, reliatina, uh, cinerus is tenia multiceps. All right. And then hydatid dehas. Hydatid this is your <laughs> echinococcus. Okay. Alright, so that's for the general characteristics of your tapeworm. So before I proceed to the first order, uh, order of business, uh, first order, yes, do you have any questions, any clarifications? Alright, okay, kaya pa ba? <laughs> Nagetra so far, dears, carry lang. Nagetra to? Yes, sir. Sure. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Ako yung i-check kung nabay naghaha. Okay, salamat. 9 out of 10. Thank you sa pa-ano. <laughs> sa pa-scory. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Alright. Any questions? Sala lang. Carry pa. Hinita kayo yung shots. Anyway. Alright. Okay. Sige. 
So we'll continue with the first order, your order pseudo -philidian. So again, kisa tong duha ka species of tapeworm infecting humans. Sa natong i-discuss din, si Diphilobotrium latum and si Spirometra. So we'll start first with Diphilobotrium latum or your Dibothriocephalus latus. Your Dibothriocephalus latus is the new name no, for Diphilobotrium latum. But a lot of references pa rin are using Diphilobotrium latum. So kanila itong gamitin. Okay, nangalan pa rin. Pero in case lang, in case lang, di ba, in exam, sa inyong boards na kayo puhon, basin feeling na sa board of examiner na, okay, let's update. Okay? We need to be in we need to be at par or we need to be updated sa mga choices, sa mga names, mga uh, scientific names. So, what if lang i-change to Diphilobotrium latum? So, again, that is Diphilobotrium latum. So, old name niya is Diphilobotrium latum and ihang new name is Diphilobotrium latum. Okay. Now, your D latum is known as the largest tapeworm of man. No, siya ang pinakadak sa tanan. Sana o. Charon. Now, for the larval stages, di ba we have discussed, it follows Coracidium. You have Procercoid and then finally, Plerocercoid. And the plerocercoid is the infective stage na to. All right. Now, common name, again, as I have emphasized already, dears, okay, very, very, ano na yun, pila na ka-time <laughs> na kong i-emphasize niya. Common name is your broad tapeworm or fish tapeworm. So, muna yung mga common name niya. Broad or fish tapeworm. Some references would say it as the broad fish tapeworm. So, inanara. Basta broad tapeworm, fish tapeworm, Broad fish tapeworm, that's Diphilobotrium lato. So habitat of your adult uh, tapeworm is your small intestine. The final host is still man. No? Reservoir hosts are again other animals that eat fish, your dogs, cats, rats. No? The first intermediate host, as we have mentioned, is your cyclops, no? your copepods. Your second intermediate host are smaller fishes. But kaniha smaller fishes sa dilatum deers, usually, dili nato siya, dili kanon sa humans, kani mga smaller fishes. Uh, so, dili na to makuang infection from the smaller fishes. We get the infection from the larger fishes, kaning paratanic host, your carnivorous fishes. The carnivorous fishes that will eat the smaller fishes na second intermediate host, no? And these carnivorous fishes will serve as paratanic host, meaning, sa sulud sa ilang lawas, no? Sa sulud sa lawas sa uh, dako na fish, the, pe the plerocercoid larva will not mature into adults. It will just remain as plerocercoid larva. So kita, humans, when we eat these larger fishes, such as salmon, such as mga trout, no, yung undercooked or raw that contains the plerocercoid larva, then we get the infection from there. Okay? So it's from the larger fishes na to siya makuha. Delete from the smaller fishes. Because these smaller fishes are not usually uh, eaten by humans. Okay? That's according to references. Okay. Now, infective stage is still the plerocercoid larva. Diagnostic stage, again, most of the time is the egg. As mentioned, it's anapolitic. We can still see segments, pero dili individual, okay? Chain of segments. So, paki-chain siya lang dyan, okay? Ako pasabot sa no segment scene, there is individual, okay? Sorry naman. Okay, pero chain of segments atong pwede makita, dili individual. Because again, they are anapolitic. Now, mode of transmission again is ingestion of raw or undercooked fish containing the plerocercoid larva. Alright, now we go now to the appearance of the adults. Ayan, so as we mentioned, it is pseudophilidian, di ba? Because again, the scolex, Iyahang appearance is spatulate. Murasyag kutsara, okay? And murasyag almond, no? Murasyag almond. Okay, murasyag almond in appearance, okay? Almond, di ba? Katong nuts, alright? Or diamond shape, alright? Now, kanina sa ito nga, these are the sucking grooves known as bothria, no? So, by the name itself, nasa pangalan na niya, dahil philobothrium. Kaya na siya ay bothrium, the slit sucking grooves, okay? So, ako na siyang i-present para makita kung siyang itsura. Ayan, di ba? For me, there's no, I can remember something. <laughs> Parang famil familiar sa chatot eme. <laughs> something that I don't like. <laughs> chatot lang. Bitaw. <laughs> so, yun na yung appearance, no? <laughs> Almond shape, spatulate, or spoon shape, no? Diamond shape. Something that, not my cup of tea. <laughs> chatot chat, bitaw. So, again, di ba? Mura siya og um, almond, kutsara, no? Slit sucking grooves, known as your bothrium. So, ayan, this is... The, kani siya ang gamiton sa tapeworm para musak siya sa wall, sa intestine. Okay? Alright. Now, the uterus, usually makita sa tunga, ayan, it's described as highly coiled uterus or rosette-shaped uterus. Naku, press the buzzer, dear. It's very important because this is a recall question from March 2021 MPLE. No? It was asked, this parasite has a characteristic uh, highly coiled uterus or rosette in appearance. Nako, press the buzz. Oh, Nako, press, press, press the buzzer. No? Press the Lord then. No? This is your 
di lato. Mas the highly coiled uterus, rosette shaped uterus na ko preza buzzer that is dalphilobothrium lato. Okay, don't forget na ko, don't forget na ko na ko sinasabi ko talaga, nagigigal ako. Okay, alright, ayan, sige. Now the mature and gravid proglottids are usually wider than they are long. So wide, no? That's why iyahang common name is broad, take from it. Broad iyahang mga proglottids, okay. And the main reproductive structures, again, uterus, makita sa tunga. Ayan, nasa, na, nasa picture. So again, it resembles a rose, no? Rosette, no? Highly coiled uterus, rosette shape. Ako na, press the buzzer, good. Okay? Agad-agad. Huwag na mag All right? Okay, that's for the dilatum adults. Okay. Now, again, additional, uh, if makita niyo ang segments, no? In specimens, usually you can see an elevation. Na yung ragbutod, no? Sa tunga. And this is the uterus, okay? Uh, and that is filled with eggs, okay? And don't forget that the uh, dilatum adults, they have uterine pore, no? So, pwede ang eggs, you can say uterus, diretso ng gawas sa uterine pore. So, asa siya mo gawas, diri sa tunga, sa lawas, no? Diri sa median, no? Because again, the uterine pore is found there. So, the eggs can be released through the uterine pore. So, the eggs will uh, pass through sa center. Dira niya, dira niya i-deposit or i-release ang eggs, Okay? Now, they may reach more than 10 meters in length with 3,000 proglotids. Now, the adults, don't forget, asa siya ma-confuse, it can be confused with spirometra species. Now, <laughs> take note, okay? Alright, so adults, adults of dilatum can be confused with, press the buzzer, spirometra species. Okay. Next, you have your eggs, no? The eggs, as you can see, is operculated. So, it's really similar to a trematode egg, no? Nasa operculum, alright? But a very important characteristic is opposite the operculum or ab operculum is a knob known as the ab opercular knob. Okay? And again, na mention na natin sa paragonimus na discussion, the eggs of dilatum can be confused with the eggs of paragonimus western mani. Okay? But aside from that, pwede po siyang ma-confuse with nanophyetos salmincola. Okay? That's another trematode. Nasa itong trematode discussion, mga uncommon human trematodes. Okay? Now, the eggs usually appear five to six weeks after infection, okay? So, again, 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 okay. Adults of dilatum can be confused with spirometra species. Eggs of dilatum can be confused with paragonimus westermani. So, if kana ang question gani, dears, eggs of dilatum can be confused with blank. Letter A, paragonimus, letter B, blah, blah, blah. Ato yung answer is paragonimus, okay? But if nanan ng nanophyetos, Ayaw lang sa naging answer dyan. Okay. Paragonimus pa rin. Okay? Siya pa rin. Okay? Paragonimus. Okay? So again, basta ang word kay confused, no? Eggs can be confused with, okay, preso buzzer, paragonimus. Pero kung adults, adults may be confused with spirometra. Please, please, please. So how do I remember? I think, ano na siya? EP, no? EPAS. So eggs, paragonimus. Um, tapos adults, spirometra. Ano lang. So, Regularly kasi na naka-effective <laughs> na mnemonics pero that's how I remember lang. Okay. So eggs of dilatum may be confused with Paragonimus westermani. Adults of dilatum can be confused with Spirometra species. Okay. Alright, sige. Di ako galit. Okay. Alright, ayan sige. Now we go na to the life cycle din kay Chika dela. We'll go lang sa picture para mas dali. Now for the picture, again as you can see, um, the eggs are unembryonated when passed into the environment, okay? And they mature sa water, all right? They mature in water. Once in the water, the coracidium, the first larva will hatch, okay? The coracidium will then swim, okay? Motil na siya padulong sa copepods, okay? Now, inside the copepods, the coracidium becomes a prosercoid, okay? Now, the prosercoid in your, um, in your, in your copepods, mustera siya as prosercoid, and once these smaller fishes will eat the copepods, the prosercoid will become plerocercoid. Okay? And inside the plerocercoid remains plerocercoid. Pag uh, kaon sa larger fish, a smaller fish, ang plerocercoid mabalhin niya. Okay? And the plerocercoid remains a plerocercoid in the larger fishes. And once these are eaten by humans okay, and other mammals, then dito na siya establish o infection. Okay? Now, inside the intestine, the plerocercoid larva, okay, will attach itself to the intestinal wall and will mature na into adults. Okay? So, they mature now into the adult dipylobotrium uh, worm. Okay? Alright. So, sa intestine, imuhang final destination. Sa imuhang dipylobotrium. Okay? Alright. Now, unsa may mga symptoms and disease na yahang na cause, of course, this is known as dipylobotriasis. Okay? As I have mentioned, basta usually mga adult worms lang na sa imuhang intestine, 
uh, they don't usually cause severe or life-threatening symptoms. Uh, so usually some of the symptoms, uh, some of patients are asymptomatic or mild symptoms lang. There may be mga digestive disorders, abdominal discomfort, weight loss, weakness, and anemia. All right. Now symptoms again may be due to byproducts of your worms or uh, mucosal irritation mismo by the worm. Okay. Now there are occasional intestinal obstruction, diarrhea, abdominal pain, or anemia. Because again, attach sa mga intestine, so possible din na irritate. There is mucoid production in ana. But again, medyo seldom lang ang severe. So mga mild symptoms ng intestinal discomfort, kalibanga, inana lang. Alright. Now, this disease or diphenobotriasis is also known as your um, Jewish housewife's disease. Because in those areas, mga Jewish countries, no, uh, they have this dish known as the gel fight fish. And you uh, and usually, I'm prepared no, mga women, alright? And before they serve the fish, ilasang i-taste ang fish, no? Uh, and usually, this gel fight fish is raw, no? So, dito nila makuha ang infection. That's why it's called Jewish housewife's disease, okay? So, again, very sexist naman, pero that's another name for it, okay? Jewish housewife's disease. Okay, alright, ayan. Now, another symptoms or another important disease na makos si Dipilobotrium is anemia, okay? But before we continue with anemia, which is your favorite, mm -hmm. Kima, favorite ng lahat, yes. Uh, ako sang ilan taon na description or na illustration para mas magets. So again, um, your anemia caused by d is associated with vitamin B12 deficiency. I'm sure, I'm sure, familiar na din ninyo. Uh, very fresh pa kay Hima 2 is last, was last sem. And mga anemia kay nasa Hima 2, so fresh pa yung kaayo. So, d na anemia na yung makos is brought about by vitamin B12 deficiency. So again, muna siya illustration, the triangle one is the vitamin B12 or cobalamin, no? And for it to be absorbed by the body, it needs a molecule to be coupled with and that is your intrinsic factor, kaning color blue. Alright? Intrinsic factor. Intrinsic factor and vitamin B12 mo forms along complex para again, ma-absorb siya sa lawas. Okay? Para ma-absorb siya sa body. Now, kinsa may nag-produce sa imuhang intrinsic factor? It's the parietal cell of the stomach. Okay? So again, take note of that. Parietal cell of the stomach produces intrinsic factor. Intrinsic factor is needed by vitamin B12 for it to be absorbed by the body. Okay? So they form a complex. Alright? So muna na siya kung i-ano. Ako na siyang i- muna siya kung i-ano. Emphasize. Okay? So we go now to the anemia that is possibly caused or possible na makos ni Dipilobotin yung latong. Your D latong competes no, for the body's vitamin B12. Okay? So let's say na competition, no? So yung buhaton is iyahang bungkagod, no? Uh, Dipilobotrium latong worms will um, break, no? The vitamin B12, the intrinsic factor complex. Kaya para makuha niya ang vitamin B12. So what happens is wala ka yung vitamin B12 yung mong lawas, di ba? And recall that vitamin B12 is necessary for DNA maturation, DNA synthesis, di ba? In your cells. That's why kung wala ka yung vitamin B12, possible na magpadayon raog uh, mutate or magpadayon raog mature mong DNA which would result to anemia of the megaloblastic type. So uncontrolled DNA production, so siging dako yung mong cells na maproduce, kaya siging mutate, siging ga-divide, no? So wala na yung mga DNA, um, mga breaks and mga stops, di ba? So possible na ang maproduce mo na cells mga dagko or hypersegmented, daghang segments, di ba? Hypersegmented neutrophil, macro ovalocytes, hyperchromic imuhang, uh, imuhang blood picture. Okay? Because again, vitamin B12 is deficient. So, ang problema aning kung dilatum, again, ang dilatum, mo compete siya with vitamin B12. Okay? Kuwaon niya ang vitamin B12 mismo. Pero ang intrinsic factor na alam. Alright? So, take note of that. Alright. Now, because of this, no, uh, because vitamin B12 wala, ang anemia na makos ni dilatum is described to be similar to pernicious anemia. So, unsa man ang pernicious anemia? Sige, ask mo. Unsa man yung pernicious anemia di ay? Sir, sounds family. <laughs> it sounds familiar. <laughs> okay. What's problem with pernicious anemia? Sige, nabay maka-answer. Alright? Deficiency of vitamin chook. Ah, na deficiency sa vitamin B12. I can answer. Basta ako ma-remember d'yo na ang pernicious anemia, sir, kay mo ay pinaka-highest level during LD sa LD ni mo. <laughs> LD? Yes, sir. Ah, okay. Tama, tama. Tama. Tama naman. Okay. Alright, sige. Aside from that, unsa may ahang, unsa na problema sa pernicious anemia? Marag, di siya maka-absorb o vitamin B12, sir. Nga naman. 
<laughs> Kung saan problema, tama, di siya ka-absorb ng vitamin B12. Why? Try ako, hagilas kayo kumaka-ask mo. Ay, kay... <laughs> sige. Ah, sige, sige, go. Kay... Ah, sige, sir. Number nine answer si Mary Lynn, sir. Okay, go, Mer. Hoy, vitamin B12 or deficiency ako na yung sir. Okay. <laughs> I don't know na kung ano siyang delay, pero something yeah. about the red blood cell, matawamer. <laughs> Deficient ka o intrinsic factor, sir, mo nang delay ka maka-absorb o vitamin B12. Okay, tama. So you're deficient in the intrinsic factor, pero ano ka ma-deficient? Ano sa'yo problema sa yung lawas? I mean like, yeah, what if they are, ano ra? Ano sa'yo problema? Ano mga ma-deficient kag intrinsic factor sa pernicious anemia? Usually, sir, kay autoimmune siya sir so na ay uh, mutation sa genes nga maka maka result sa deficient ka o intrinsic factors or de- so dili mo re- produce so per- uh, intrinsic factor mo parietal cells mo ang stomach sir all right very good so magaling tama no pernicious anemia is an autoimmune disease okay and ihang gina target as the destruction of the parietal cells okay ayan so muna na siya autoimmune destruction of the parietal cells so therefore dili ka maka produce of intrinsic factor now remember that intrinsic factor is needed for vitamin B12 to be absorbed by the body so if guba na yung parietal cells wala na mo produce of intrinsic factor so therefore bahala magsikag ka ng vitamin B12 rich na food since wala maka intrinsic factor dili maabsorb sa body okay gets so that's for pernicious anemia that is why uh, you mentioned here that the anemia caused by dilatum is similar to pernicious anemia. Why? Okay. Balik ta. Dilatum na anemia is caused by vitamin B12 deficiency. So, ang problema ni mo sa dilatum is na kay intrinsic factor pero imuhang vitamin B12 wala. Sige, ito na lang lang siyang e right? Para mas maghiyat. So, dilatum and then pernicious. So, vitamin B12 and then intrinsic factor, okay? So, si, vit- si D-Latum, alright? Yung vitamin B12 is decreased, pero mo intrinsic factor na ara, para mo plus. For pernicious anemia, you have vitamin B12, pero wala kay intrinsic factor. So, in a way, the overall picture, overall result, same ragya pun. Vitamin B12 cannot be absorbed by the body. Hence, both of them will present megaloblastic anemia. Gets? Because again, bahalag taas ka vitamin B12 pero wala po kayo intrinsic factor sa pernicious anemia, di siya po niyo ma-absorb ang vitamin B12. kay need lagi ang intrinsic factor to be absorbed. Likewise, anemia caused by dilatum, bahalag na ka intrinsic factor kay naggana rin mo ang stomach o kaya rin mo parietal cells, pero nag-compete po si dilatum na pabibo sa mga vitamin B12, muragya po. Walay mo bind sa intrinsic factor na vitamin B12 to be absorbed by the body. So overall, ang picture sa duha, it still produces megaloblastic anemia. That's why similar sila o uh, presentation sa imuhang blood picture. Nagets ra? Okay ra? Nagets ra? Okay ra? Yes, any, sir. Any questions? Okay ra to? Nagets ra? Okay ra to? Yes, sir. Ha? Okay. Sige. Very good. Now, <laughs> that is again the anemia caused by d but again, this type of anemia by dilatum is not commonly seen in all of the patients, okay? Uh, usually, mga patients na vitamin B12 deficiency, uh, about mga 2% lang ang produce of severe anemia. Because again, possibly that, um, although although siguro na ay deficiency in vitamin B12, basi nagsigit siya kung siya kaon ng vitamin B12, so possible na na mga excess vitamin B12, na possible na nakuha niya po sa patient, na naabsorb sa body, no? So, um, gamay lang ang mo, gamay lang ang mo, sorry? gamay lang ang mo progress to severe anemia sa dilatum okay now usually the anemia caused by dilatum is seen in patients no sa mga baltic regions sa finland no sa dito sa mga european regions because they are usually predisposed no genetically predisposed to these types of diseases okay so dito sila makita all right ayan sige now again for severe anemia ng mga patients uh, they may cause uh, may may exhibit neurological symptoms no you have numbness, weakness, coordination problems, impairment of deep uh, sensibilities. Because again, vitamin B12 can, is also used for mga nerve impulse, di ba? So, uh, if wala kayo vitamin B12, pwede po ka na mga nerve disorders or neurological symptoms. Okay. Now, vitamin B12 of d is 50 times more than your T saginata. Okay? So, kailangan nyo siya vitamin B12. Alright? So, muna siya pathology. Um, why? Okay? 
<laughs> same same sila appearance uh, or same same sila oh, blood pictures of pernicious anemia and your dilato but don't forget also that aside from intrinsic factor parietal cells also produce the hydrochloric acid in your stomach so if nakai pernicious anemia you don't have intrinsic factor you also don't have hydrochloric acid or it exhibits again as diba a chloridria diba meaning imuhang gastric juice walay acid Okay, so this uh, is acidic because again, the parietal cells that produce the intrinsic factor and the uh, uh, acid, hydrochloric acid, H plus ions, are destroyed. Autoimmune destruction. Okay, all right, so I hope na gets through siya. All right, acloritria. All right, now for lab PX, of course, lab di laboratory diagnosis, uh, the diagnosis is based on the recovery of the eggs. Okay, and as I mentioned, if you can recover a chain of segments, okay, then that is a clue to dilato. Because again, kung chain of segments yung makita sa sample, yung wala kayo makita mga individual proglotids, then possibly that is dilato. Because again, the proglotids are anapolitic, meaning dili sila ma-detach. Okay. Now, aside from that, if you want to differentiate anemia caused by dilato or if it's pernicious ba, you then examine the gastric juice for the presence of free hydrochloric acid. Because again, in pernicious anemia, Walay hydrochloric acid na makita. Ah, chloridria. Why? Because parietal cells are destroyed and parietal cells produce both the intrinsic factor and the H plus ions found in your gastric juice, which makes it acidic. Okay? I hope na gets lang to siya. Alright? <laughs> so I hope na gets siya to. Okay? Alright. So that's for uh, dilatum na infections. Okay. Any questions so far, dears? So ano ha? Akong challenge na po. <laughs> Paki-review on anemia. I need to review po mismo. Ako mismo maamin that I need to review on the anemia and the leukemia. <laughs> Medyo weak yung ko, Ana. No? Pero once ma-review man mo siya, you, you get to understand the pathology. No? Pagbasa na ako sa pernicious anemia kay Murag, ah, okay, without shock to, no? Kuba ay ang parietal cells, so wala siya intrinsic factor. And intrinsic factor is needed by vitamin B12 to be absorbed sa body. So therefore, it makes sense na nung magka- uh, megaloblastic anemia ang patient. Okay, so inana. As I mentioned, usually ang hima manggood, um, most of the topics there are complex. Uh, Dili kayo siya need of memorization. No? It just needs a lot of analysis and internalization. And mag-gets ka, if makagets ka sa pathogenesis, usually, or mas ma easy na lang ka maka-remember or easy na lang din mo siya masabdan why the patient or why the blood picture is like this. No? So, laban lang ta mga hima fans. <laughs> Mucha, weakest kina ko ang hima, no? Ina-admit ko naman, pero laban lang ka, okay? Review, review, review. Kailangan lang ng review, okay? Alright, see, that's for diphilobotrium lato, okay? So, any questions? Any clarifications? Nag-gets rin eh? Kani mga anemia? Sa di lato mo pernicious, ha? Eh, basta mag-ask mo, sir, gano'n siyang, like, if wala na akong discuss ba, sir, gano'n siyang mag-describe as similar to pernicious anemia? Ang sa di ayans, di ba? So, at least, I hope na klaro lang to siya, na clarify to siya. Nga nung giingon siya na, ang anemia caused by dilatum is similar to anemia of, uh, an, similar to pernicious anemia. So I hope na klaro na to siya. Okay? Alright, CP. So any questions before I proceed? Okay pa kayo dyan? Nandiyan pa ba kayo ah? <laughs> Nandiyan pa ba kayo dears? Okay pa ba mo? Or yes, sir. Ka? Yes, sir. Okay, very good. Sige, <laughs> ayan. <laughs> Okay, sige. So we proceed na to the last for today. So chill, chill lang tano. <laughs> the last of the pseudophilidian, your spirometra. Now your spirometra species, um, similar with diphilobotrium. Actually, your diphilobotrium deers, na pa other species na mga possible infection to humans. No, it's not only dilato, but dilato mga pinaka common. All right, but in other areas of the world, um, such as in Peru or mga Central South America, ang common nila nas Common nila na species dito is Diphilobotrium pacificum, okay? Because again, they have dish, dishes there, mga food na ginakaon nila as raw, no? such as ceviche, no? Ceviche. Ayan, ceviche. Ceviche, alright? Ceviche. So this is raw fish na gibutangan o lime juice, inana. So basically, pinaganda na version sa kinilaw na to. <laughs> Actually, no? Kinilaw is Filipino ceviche, o di ba? So kinilaw is um, a parang low budget version, <laughs> low budget low budget version ng ceviche. So inana lang. So same ka uh, It's fish that is again um, submerged or na lime juice inana. And lime juice usually do not kill the um, vinegar. Okay, uh, huh? lime juice do not kill the vinegar. Huh? Lime juice do not kill the larva found in the fish. Okay, so 
common actually dito sa, sa South Central America. In the Philippines, although natin mga kinilaw na dishes, it's possible that the fish that we use sa kinilaw are not infected by the parasite or it's not the fish na gina-infect sa parasite na dila to. Okay? So possible. That's why in the Philippines, hindi kayo common po ng dila to. But there have been local uh, reported cases lang, mga seven daw, kabuo. Okay? So, seven cases of dilato in the Philippines. So, it's not really common kaya. Alright? Okay. So, again, common case dito sa Finland, no? Sa mga Baltic areas, no? Sa mga mga countries na yung daghang lakes, and at mga Great Lakes sa US sa una na adaw. And then, because again, of the fishes that could reside there, and dito, muna ang fish na gina-infect sa parasite. Okay? So, yes, that's for Diphilobothrium. For Spirometra, similar, it contains a lot of species. No? You have Spirometra mansoni, Spirometra erinaceae, Spirometra mansonoides, uh, Spirometra renarum, and your aberrant Sparganum proliferum. Okay. Now, again, for humans, uh, we are accidental hosts when we eat the larva, no? or when we get the larva of Spirometra, and it causes your Sparganosis. Uh, the pleurosurcoid larva of Spirometra is also known as Sparganum, okay? And this Sparganum can live for many years, no? For more than nine years, all right? Now, definitive hosts are your dogs and cats, uh, cats no? Um, sila hindi na mo complete sa life cycle, all right? The first intermediate hosts are still your cyclops, so similar siya with Dipidobotrium. Ang second intermediate host lang ang different, uh, this time it's the frogs, no? Frogs, fish, and mga snakes, ayan, very important. Para tanik host kita, man, okay? And then, infective stage could be prosercoid larva or Pleurosurcoid larva. So, the hantang possible modes of transmission. Number one is number one is ingestion of water containing the cy cyclops, no? Contaminated with the cyclops. So, if may nung natong water, ang atong makuha kay the prosercoid larva. Okay? So, possible. Next is ingestion of raw or undercooked na snakes, frogs, or fishes. Ayan. So, possible dito po makuha. And another one is the local application of snake or frog flesh to wounds, no? Because in some regions in the world, they have this mga practices. Mamurag, kung sa ato pa, sa ato apa, mga pang binisaya na pagtambal ba, na kaganing mukuha ang mga herbs, mukuha ang mga leaves, yung mga animal, whatever, niya ilahang i-mix, magamang silang paste, no, niya ibutang sa sama ni Nana, no? That's known as poultice. Poultice. Ayan, poultice, okay? Poultice. <laughs> then, um, in regions in the world, sa so ubang regions, they use uh, flesh of frogs or snakes para sa poultice, may putang sa wound, no? Now, if the flesh of the skin or uh, if the flesh of the snake or frogs kay containing the larva, possible na the larva will migrate to the wound, no? Sa saman, sa tissue, sa humans, and this can cause now the infection, okay? So, local application of uh, flesh of the snakes or frogs, okay? Uh, to the skin, pwede po siya sa eyes, conjunctiva, or sa vagina. So, dito ko na na winging. <laughs> Dito ko na shocked, no? Ano mo butangan siya sa vagina? Like why, no? So I don't know po ngano pero nai ubang regions in the world na ginabuhat siya. So I don't know. So apil sa vagina possibly. Okay? Ayan sige. Now for the adults, as you can see, same lagi appearance with the latum. You have here the two sucking grooves, your botrium, no? Um and again, spatulate, marasha kuchara, no? Kuchara si coach bamboo chara. <laughs> Ay, check ah. Kuchara, <laughs> uh, spoon shape, almond shape, <laughs> na head sa skolet. So, same ragun siya with the adults of ding latum. That's why the adults are mistaken for ding latum. Okay. Now, they attach again to the intestines. <laughs> and the uterus is described as having spiral uterus. Okay? So, take note lang, dears, magulan ako na butang gira. Spiral uterus in contrast to your ding latum na rosette uterus. Okay. Alright, now the adults, of course, are found in the definitive host, the dogs and cats and other mammals. In humans, we can see the adults in our intestine. Okay? Now the eggs, ayan, as you can see, similar to with your dilatum na naay operculum. Uh, it may be confused with a trematode egg, but a very important characteristic is the anterior, kanyang atubangan. It's medyo um, uh, narrower, okay? Medyo sharp yahang itsura, okay? Narrower at the anterior end, okay? Compared to the eggs of dilatum. Alright? Sige. So that's for your spirometra species na eggs. Okay. Now for the life cycle, para mas easy, ako na present niya po ng picture. So again, from dogs and cats that are the definitive host, sila ang produce sa eggs. Okay? Now the eggs, again, similar with dilatum, unimbrinated in feces, mature in water, and muhach ang coracidium. The coracidium will then again swim pa sa cyclops, 
cyclops inside uh, coracidium will become prosercoid. The prosercoid larva again will remain in the in the uh, copepods or cyclops. It will be eaten by fish, your frog or snake, and inside the fish, frog or snake, they become the plerosercoid larva. Now humans kita pwede to makuha siya from the water, diba? Drinking water contaminated with copepods, all right? Or eating uh, the flesh of the frogs, snake or fish or katong local application, diba? For wounds, dito nato siya makuha ang larva. Okay? All right. So very very important dears because again, this is another board exam we call question for MTLE of March 2021. Ang question was, I think di apil na ko niya sa inyo hang ano, sa inyo hang um in your hang pretest no a man uses an aphrodisiac ayan um, a man eats snake as an aphrodisiac do you know what's an aphrodisiac the gets mo's an aphrodisiac dear yes are sir. you okay? <laughs> it's a term ni pato ba it's a little bit ato yes it's aphrodisiac run sir okay so aware mo na <clears throat> so aware si run sana so, sir <laughs> chocolate ra man ako aphrodisiac <laughs> So basically, aphrodisiac are food. Um, possible, sa usually food or pwede siyang smell, di ba, Ron? Or perfume that would increase your libido. Okay, if I'm not mistaken, ha? Chak to ko, Ron. Um, these are food, perfumes na maka-increase yung mong libido. In other words, makapa-H word ni mo. Okay? <laughs> Alright. Makapa-H word. Okay? H H O R N Y. Okay? So, di lang ako siya i-mention kay Masin Anak. Maano po, may issue ka na H word. Okay? So, aphrodisiac. Okay? So, negosya siya sa boards. Tato kong friend na ni Tay, kung na siya kabalun sa ng aphrodisiac. <laughs> ano ko na, ah, ah, okay. So, ah, ang snakes, dike, pwedeng aphrodisiac. Sige, noted. Tsaka, tsaka, tsaka. Wala ko naka-idea, ano, no? Wala po ko yung plan. <laughs> okay. uh, but anyway, snakes daw were eaten by this man as an aphrodisiac. And then, uh, which of the following parasite can possibly be transmitted through that, No? And then, ang choices kay mga tapeworm. Okay? So, ang choices kay A, Spirometra. B, Diphilobotrium latum. Ang C, O, D, kay Tenia, Solium, Tenia, Saginata. So, ako friend, wala siya kabalo kung unsa. Kung unsa to. Unsa lang. I think, ang yung i-focus ato kay Aphrodisiac. So, ano ko na, ha, dili na mo na siya. Pang MR, mo na Aphrodisiac. Ang yung i-focus kay ang snakes, nagikaon. So, ang possible answer kita ato is, kung unsa man, kay snakes man nagikaon. Ang answer is, Spirometra. Ayan. So, Spirometra. Because again, di ba, ang dilato, wala matang nakamention na pwede siyang makuha sa snake. Ang tenia po na solium and tenia saginata, when we go to that discussion, wala po tayo mention, dili na silang gamit ng snakes, no? As an intermediate host. It's only Spirometra. Okay? So, ayan. Negosya sa boards, no? <laughs> Towards Aphrodisiac. So, now you know, if you want to search, i-search na, no? Aphrodisiac. So, it's, it's food or pwede po siyang smell that could increase a person's libido, sexual libido. So, magpa-H ni mo. Okay? Ayan. Alright. Sige. So, it's a boarding sound question uh, recall. Okay? Recently lang yun. March 2021. So, very, very important. Okay? So, ang focus na ito ato kay snakes. And igawas po na siya sa inyo ang pretest. Okay? So, spirometra itong answer ato. Okay. So, once a mandi, ano mali sa spirometra, no? So, once we eat uh, the spirometra, okay? Or once we eat something na nice spirometra na larva, the larva, ang iyahang buha ito magod sa body is that dili siya mo mature into adults. Unlike your Diphilobotrium latum, it will remain as a larva, your pterosaurid larva, or also known as your sparganum. Okay, that's why ang disease na yung ginakos is known as sparganosis. Okay, now this sparganum can migrate. Pwede siyang muliho, no? From uh, one organ to another. Okay, and these migrating spargana um, will depend on the organ na yung gina, gina affect sa symptom. So kung sa brain, mas intense yun, sa eyes, food, it can lead to blindness, alright? But generally, kung migrate siya, wala kayong mga symptoms na ma-feel, alright? And that is known as migrating tumor, no? So, mga kag mga nodules na mag magbalin balit sa mga lawas, no? So, migrating tumor. Now, if sa eyes, they could cause swelling of the eye, alright? So, naik pedi orbital swelling. Pareha sa Romania sign, no? Romania sign sa imuhang Chagas disease, no? Caused by Dipanosoma cruzi, no? So, Romania sign similar, magkubag yung mata, pedi orbital swelling. Now, it could also cause elephantiasis if the spargonum will reach mga lymph channels. Peritonitis, if say muhang uh, peritoneal cavity or brain abscess. And when spargana settle in the brain or spine, it can cause neurological symptoms, spreading seizure, headache, abnormal skin sensations, and numbness or tingling. Now, occasionally, we have this sparganum proliferum, which is a type of spargana, all right, that proliferates. Pwede siyang mu, uh, mu, mu cause of 
different lesions, no? Mukosa different lesions, and inside those lesions are different or daghan po na mga pterosaurid larva. Okay, so that's a type of sparga sparganum na larva called sparganum proliferum. Okay, so mo proliferate siya, mukosa siya a lot of lesions in the tissue, and inside the lesions are again mga scolex, no? Or mga uh, so sorry, mga pterosaurid larva. So mas intense yah ang symptoms, mas intense yah ang disease presentation. Okay, so that's for sparganosis. No, so it's the larva of the spirometra that causes the infection and causes severe na mga symptoms, di ba? So, rag similar sa with the visceral larva migrans of the nematodes, di ba? Kinsa ganit ng main, main na makakoso visceral larva migrans at mga nematodes. Kinsa ganit siya? Ala, nalimtan na po ay. Kinsa nato? Visceral larva migrans. Kinsa man? Visceral larva migrans? Sa nematodes? Ikalintan na ninyo ako ni Monix for that. Toxocara. Sir Canis, Catis. Sila, pinaka-common. Kato na. Tama. Thank you, Dave. Toxocara species. Pinaka-common yun is visceral larva migrans na po is Toxocara. Pero dagan pa yung pwede, di ba? As mentioned. Pero ang pinaka-common yun is Toxocara species. Diba itong ni Monix? Si Vice Ganda, visceral. Na siya kanta na boom, karakaraka. So, visceral larva migrants caused by toxocara-cara. Toxocara. Okay? So, in a way, similar siya with spirometrapod na bumigrate ang larva and sila ang makakos o disease presentation. Okay? Or mga symptoms. Alright. So, that's for sparganosis. Again, caused by spirometra SPP. Now, for lab DX, of course, it's more on surgical approach, histological examination. And pag tangtang na ito sa lesion or sa mga nodules, we can see This one, kani siya. This is the sparganum, no? This is the pleris, plerocercoid larva of spirometra. And once we recover that from tissues, usually they are motile, all right, and glistening white, no? Para uh, sa picture, puti yun siya, all right? And it's motile, similar to um, the proglotid of tenia saginata. Okay. Now for aberrant spargana caused by sparganum proliferum, katong proliferative lesions, of course, surgery, and then we examine it histologically. So we look at um, Uh, histotechniques, no? We process it histo uh, histo histology, histologically, okay? All right. Now, for treatment, surgical removal, of course, of the nodules or sa eyes mga ni, or prazicontel. That's the uh, drug na pwede itong gamito. Okay? So, ang kanisa picture, dears, muna siya ang sparganome. All right? This is the sparganome. So, as you can see, it's white. All right? And sa taas, as you can see, you don't see any hooks. You don't see any suckers. You don't see any rostello. Because again, this is a pseudophilidia na tapeworm. And the pseudophilian tapeworm, they don't have suckers, di ba? They don't have uh, rostellum, they don't have hooks. Ang naan nila kay Bothria, di ba? The slit-like appearance. So, kanisha, pwede na siyang muslit-like na para may mo sa ang scolex, okay? So, this is the pleurocircoid larva. Ang next ana niya is, of course, the adult cestode na. So, this is the sparganum of spirometra. And usually, muna siya ito makita sa ito mga tissue sections and mga biopsies and also from surgery, from patients um, affected by spirometra, okay, or those that are suffering with sparganosis, okay? And uh, that's all for today. Yes. <laughs> for tomorrow, ito i-continue. Medyo mataas-taas pa to, actually. Pero laban lang. Kaya natin to. I hope mahuman natin ka within two. This week. Humanon dyan natin siya within this week, okay? Um, before we end, uh, do you have any questions, dears? 